Greetings gang, it's Bill here. Uh, I am going to try and do a honing video today uh, with some information <laughs> uh, and it'll be some fun. Uh, what I'm attempting to do is, uh, this is, I forget what the number is, but this is um, one of these uh, gold dollar fakes of the uh, Sheffield type of razor. Uh, and uh, the interesting thing on this, and let's make sure I can uh, try and get a focus on there, is that, is that the, ray, the blade itself has a smile in it. And uh, uh, yet the the back the honing guide, okay, the honing guide which is here uh, down a little bit is straight. Now this is not the first uh, uh, gold dollar I've got. I've got a W fifty nine which was really 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 wacky, okay. But uh, you know I bought this just because I just wanted to play with it, <laughs> okay. So uh, right out of the box, I, I had noticed that this, uh, as far as the geometry and, 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 you know, side to side was a little bit nicer than that uh, W59 was. And uh, uh, I do what I knew, normally do, I looked at. I found it was a little bit thinner and uh, I did uh, my packing peanut test. Now here's, here's an interesting thing about this is that while this does not do much anything with the push cut, okay, is you get a lateral move on there. This goes right in there, okay? So what that tells me is that this, the very edge of this is, is a lot like a serrated type edge knife where uh, that knife would, uh, serrated edge would go through a tomato or, a, you know, bread knives or have a serrated edge. And I took it and I stropped it and I even put it on the uh, convexed balsa strops uh, with abrasive. And what I found looking looking under uh, magnification was was on the first part of uh, the first part of the bevel as it goes this way, you could see some scratches and they weren't mine, okay? Because this has not been on a hone here. Okay, uh, I don't know if it's been on a hone anywhere. <laughs> it may have been on uh, a wheel, you know, abrasive wheel or a belt, or I have no idea what they do in China with these when they when they grind and make these things. Uh, but you could see s some coarse type scratches, and then you see. And when I originally looked at it, it was pretty much that way all the way up the bevel. Okay, now what I had done, okay, is you could see the the. Uh, scratches on the beginning part of the uh, bevel. And then you can see where it's polished, okay, where it's almost kind of mirror looking from where I was working it on on uh, uh, balsa uh, blocks with, with a charged abrasive. And then all the way out on the very, very edge, uh, uh, your, your, um, you can kind of see uh, my stuff was not hitting out to the apex on that. So, so I was not doing it. And I figured, well, I wanted to uh, uh, try and confirm uh, with a shave. And I put the, the, I did a video sometime back where I actually did a shave with this. It was like, it was really, I mean, I couldn't even get through, <laughs> you know, uh, the first part of one pass with this. Uh, so I'm going to hone this up and, and, and I'm going to show, uh, with the straight edge guide, how, how you can get, uh, a, uh, a smiley, uh, type edge off of it. Uh, typically from what I've seen most, uh, and I don't have any really, really smiley razors. I have one French razor that has a little bit of one. And the, the hone guide actually follows that, okay? Now, I'm not sure, I'm assuming that that, that, that part of the spine is, was part of the die set in the forging. And uh, that would follow that when you're, you're honing that, okay, you would, you would move, move along in there and, and 
try and keep that that curvature to the blade. Uh, if you are, uh, I think curved blades are probably the hardest of all things, probably, uh, smalling blades are probably the hardest of all things to hone, um, because you have to, you have to be aware of what you're doing and moving. Uh, if, uh, you subscribe to, uh, flat honing methods where everything's flat and on there, it's mathematically impossible to not hone a straight line. You have to hone a straight line. If you're, if, if this is indeed straight and you put that on a flat stone, there's nothing that you can do, uh, uh, that will not make that, uh, 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 pretty much straight across. Uh, what, and with, with a convex stone, I do get a little bit different, uh, uh, method to do that and i'm going to take these uh inexpensive stones that i got from uh sharpening supplies i'm going to start with their 1000 grit these are water stones so they do have to soak okay and what i'm going to do with this is is because this hone is is not only convex this way on the plate it is it is it, it is in the long direction of that plate, and this is in the short direction, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be focusing where, where I kind of keep it straight, but I rock the edge as I go across so that, so that I'm working uh, all the way across the edge against the spine. Now, what that'll do is it will uh, cause it to follow, okay, but not dictate anything other than taking a little bit off from where where it's at okay so uh and i think i wrapped these stones and this is the first time i've used them so uh i could take a uh, uh what i'm doing here okay i'm just taking a arkansas uh i think this is a trans arc i'm not real sure and what i'm what i'm doing here is i'm just gonna uh, this, this has also got some curvature to it. And I'm, I'm just take smoothing this down a little bit, trying to almost burnish it, if you will, even though when I sandpapered this, I think I went to, I think I went to a thousand grit on this. Um, I can't really remember. Okay. But, and I'm going to be doing pretty much, uh, I'm not scripted on this. I've not practiced this. Uh, and I'm going to see how it goes. And you may, you may see me, uh, in, in the video, when you get to this, you may see me cut out of some of the work I'm doing and come back in just cause I don't want to make like a super, super long, uh, video. But what I'm doing is I'm, I'm in. I may be doing a little bit of this as I go through uh, this kind of motion. And what I'm going to be trying to do is I'm going to be trying to uh, go through the more coarse stones on the long axis and uh, set an initial bevel. And then I'm going to do uh, which the method which has really kind of worked for me. It doesn't really follow the 19th century uh, German grinder's handbook, okay? But but I know that if I set the bevel here, I'm all the way out to the edge, and then I come back with the uh, uh, more curvy stone, okay? Then what I'm doing is I'm cutting out and I'm hollowing that bevel out. And I'm not sure how far I'll take that, but I'll at least know that I've gotten to my edge on this stone and then I have back beveled a little bit out of it and then we'll see how uh, this winds up in the end. So, uh, for a couple of, uh, Let's see where my, uh... Okay, so what that's doing is that is getting me, like, all the way to the edge. 
and then starting to come back into the bevel, already hollowing the bevel out just a little bit, okay? Uh, I'm going to go just a little bit more to make sure I'm on the edge, and I'm going to start dropping down to the, uh, to the final grips. Um, these, uh, these stones from shopping supplies, they're really, especially at this 1,000 grip for a razor, this is really, really, really fast. And if I can manage to get through this, uh, and uh, I'd really, really like to get through this, doing this work, and then uh, uh, be able to come back and do a shave on that. So uh, right for right now, I got this bottle in the way. <laughs> I did that once before. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to jump out rather than to uh, try and video the whole thing. If there's anything important, I'll start the video again. I'll come back in with a with a little demonstration and an explanation. So, see you soon. Okay, I'm back again for a little bit of an update, okay? Uh, one of the reasons that I purchased this stones, I said in a number of other videos where I initiated these, was I was looking for a very, very inexpensive stone that was really easy to shape. Uh, something if, uh, somebody wanted to explore uh, this particular style, it would be a way to get into it uh, without having to go through uh, the trouble to uh, to shape uh, an Arkansas stone, okay? Uh, it's work. I do like, I do like uh, the codicle I have on uh, this dimension, and I do like uh, the... Uh, I have a soft arc and I have a black arc on the longer radius with the short radius going this way. Uh, one thing about these stones is this particular stone, and these are supposed to follow uh, like the same grit rating as as most of the stones. Unlike uh, I think I think um, specifically uh, the Shapton gr grit rating is is confusing, uh, but. You know, so when when Shapton says they have a thirty thousand grit stone, um, why is it that somebody else's stone that has the same grit particle size is only twenty thousand? Okay, so um, as long as you understand that, okay. But this one thousand grit, this yellow side on this, is really really fast, really really aggressive. If this one goes out, if when this stuff, if uh, um, uh, this gets in your hands and I loan you this or whatever. Uh, watch this one. This one is really, really um, a fast cutter. It, it can really, really move, remove a lot of metal. Uh, certainly to help uh, correct the problem and that kind of stuff. And that's, I don't think this 1000, I think this 1000 cuts faster than uh, my Nanawa Superstone 1000. Uh, but anyhow, I worked it on the 3000 side. I went to the 1000 for a little bit. I went to the 3000 side. And with the curvature of this, and particularly out here on the toe, it's like really, really hard uh, to get to the edge. And I thought, well, I'm going to cut a little bit more out of the back bevel. So instead of following the way I normally do and go through on the long axis uh, the entire uh, progression, what I did was I stopped and I decided to start a back bevel with the 3000 because I was already on the 3000 on this one. So I have uh, this particular combination stone is 3008 and this one is 3001. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if I would uh, uh, do it exactly that way again. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, for the most part, 3,000 on this set of stones is really, really as coarse, I think, as you would ever really, really need to do. Anyhow, I've done that back bevel. I haven't, I've thought about it, but I haven't really uh, jumped over to my Arkansas yet. Uh, but from that point there on the 3,000, on uh, this particular uh, short radius, I've pretty much erased all of the previous bevel. It does not, on an ag aggressive stone like this, does not take that long uh, to change uh, the shape and the totality of the bevel. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back on to the long axis uh, with the finer grits and begin to uh, begin to work the edge. This one is 6,000 and 10,000. So I'm going to go on 6 and 10 and see if I can get uh, my edge to where I like it. Interesting thing on the packing peanut, I'm not at where I have a push cut yet. Okay, but where what I have done is I have limited how easily in the slide cut, okay, it doesn't go in easily like it did originally, which which is an indicator of a jagged uh, serrated edge, uh, which kind of brings to my my mind recently I saw, and I don't I don't know who the gentleman is, but I've seen um his post and posting videos of a number of different places with uh honing with a number of different razors and a number of different stones and his evaluations with a with a hanging hair test and he's taking the razor and he's showing how he hones it and he's doing the hanging hair test and he has a coarser hair than mine <laughs> okay because mine don't do well on that none of these around this house do but he just lays it down. It just it just cuts, and I have not seen that. Really, really, I've not seen a hanging hair test uh, with with stuff that I have. I guess I don't have uh, the calibrated hair for that or whatever. <laughs> uh, but uh, then what he does is something very very interesting. Let me see if I got. I don't have any tissue paper here, but he does this thing, and it made sense to me. I why he does it okay where he takes the tissue paper and he does this thing and he has the tissue paper and what he does is he drags the edge with just just kind of weight only across uh the tissue paper and shows that it's not cutting it does the hanging hair toss and the the uh uh the home police all came out after him and and it was like it was like the Keystone Cops meet Rodney King, the beatdown that he started getting, you know. And uh, it made sense to me, though, because it seemed to me that, uh, and he didn't, you know, I don't know if he's n not in English. I assume because of some of the things he's written that English is not his native language. But it seemed like what he was doing, he was trying to establish sharpness with the hanging hair and show that he has smoothness. And I'll explain it this way, okay? Uh, in terms of uh, pounds per square inch, okay? Uh, now, in this kitchen, I don't have sheet vinyl anymore, but when I first bought this house, it did have sheet vinyl here in the kitchen. And uh, sheet vinyl, as it was explained to me, is uh, not a super, super durable thing, uh, to women in high heels <laughs> and and I I had this gal in the kitchen we had some sort of a gathering or whatever and this this gal I mean you know maybe 100 pounds soaking ringing wet with rocks in her pockets and she's standing over there and you know like pop pop my brand new floor she's she put you know she's got these you know high heels on put holes right right through it at that weight and you know i don't weigh what i do then what i do now but i was still a big guy okay it's like it's like how does this little girl well it's pounds per square inch it's like you take a you take a gal that weighs so lightly and you put a heel okay that's like the size of you know like half the size of a dime and put all that weight right down on there it does go through and the same thing applies with your razor okay if you're spreading the weight and you're wanting to see you know, okay, so I, like right here, I'm doing this on a paper towel and I'm feeling a grab, 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 grab. Okay. Um, I think what he was looking for is he was looking for a smoothness where the weight of the razor is dissipated along, you know, that edge so that it's not cutting into it, but as he's moving it, it's not grabbing it. And if he had a little bit of a jagged, serrated type edge on there, it would grab and cut through that tissue paper. Okay, so that's another little thing. I'm going to drop out and I'm going to go uh, work back on my razor again. Okay, so uh, a little bit of an update. Um, I've been working on this uh, piece a lot longer than I wanted to. Uh, I went uh, back and forth through the uh, 
sharpening supplies, stones, synthetic water stones with, through the, and I went back and forth a couple of times with the, the short radius and the long radius. Uh, and I was getting close, but uh, you know, I thought, uh, I know even though those cut a lot better, I know that I get a much smoother edge uh, with the short radius cuticle I have and uh, uh, zen arc, soft arc, hard arc, uh, long radius, short radius. And um, I've worked back and forth a little bit, a little bit with this. I think I have a much more refined edge. I'm not getting, uh, right now, I'm not getting the, the push cut. I want a little bit of a lateral movement it does. So it's it's getting really really close. Uh, I you know I had it on. I went from the sharpening supply synthetic stones. I went to the Nana with twelve K. I just was not uh, uh, totally happy with that. This um, is is certainly a little bit better. Um, uh, you know I probably should have drawn a put this down on a piece of paper and drawn a little circle or something like that because. Uh, Again, the tendency with a straight spine is to to have a straight edge. I may have, uh, uh, in working with this, taken some of the some of the smile out of this. It's certainly not it's certainly not uh, straight to my eye, but it does not appear to have to be quite as smiley as it used to be. Uh, and uh, I did find that. Uh, uh, also on the uh, W59 uh, because you're working so hard on to try and keep the edges and not uh, put too much action in the middle but even though you're trying to do that you do get a little bit more action uh, in the middle as you go across there so I'm pretty close on this uh, I'm going to go back I'm going to uh, hit it with uh, the super stone and see where I come up with it Okay, it didn't take too long. I thought I'd uh, show a couple of the type of strokes that I'm doing on the, this is a 12K Superstone. Uh, I've, I'm uh, working where I'm rocking as I'm going across. Let's see if I can get this with a slight, uh, with a slight X on it. Um, I'm also doing some, some of the, uh, in the same type of pattern, edge trailing strokes, um, a lot less pressure than I had been using on some of the other stuff. Uh, I'm not totally sure if I'm, uh, where I want to be on, on this one, uh, but I am getting a little bit better cut into the peanut. Uh, it's not a total uh push cut but uh i may go to the strops the balsa strops and then come back and see where i'm at so there's the update okay so here i am back again uh very much later uh with one of these things that i call uh one of the china wonders because a lot of times you really wonder why you bought these things uh for me I know why I bought it, because I wanted to uh, have some practice on some real, real uh, challenging stuff and and uh, further my experience in my own personal education. Anyhow, uh, it's just too much to explain how much I went through in going back and forth. Uh, I had to pull out uh, my Arkansas and my... Uh, my codicule and uh one time i had to i had to kill the edge this this uh this particular razor seems a little bit more prone to chip there are a couple of little teeny tiny chip outs in here i'm not uh totally happy with with that i'm probably gonna uh revisit this again um and try and clean those up uh as far as I'm concerned, uh, you know, that's something that you chalk up to experience. And uh, when you are working 
uh, with, with really, really thinning and hollowing the bevel out, uh, it is possible to, that it'd be easier to, to do a chip out. Uh, but I did get to where I wanted to with, uh, with, with this test where, where, where I'm going in with just a push cut. Okay. So, uh, this is, this is plenty sharp. Uh, I did, uh, finish up the, the way I like to. Um, I'm probably, uh, I went through, uh, a, a balsa strop progression where I mount these things on this magnetic thing. A lot of you have seen this before if you see my videos. And I go with a Dovo green chromox uh, iron oxide uh, Dovo. This is Dovo black. I'm, I'm not even sure what that is really. I don't know if it's carbon diamond. I have no idea what it is. But they are, from what I have read, progressively smaller in the size and then I jump to a half a micron CBN then I go to a quarter micron CBN and I go to a one micron CBN I'm really liking the CBN uh, I ordered probably out of the stuff that I bought the one I use the most is the uh, the tenth micron and uh, uh, I heard some bad I read some bad news the other day that uh, sometime late last sometime last fall I don't know exactly when it was but the uh, gentleman who brought to the market the CBN uh, emulsion slurry that I like to use that I really really liked uh, had passed away uh, his name is Ken Schwartz uh, and uh, uh, as soon as I heard that I the uh, his products were being sold through KME sharpening little teeny tiny bottles <laughs> okay and they did have some of the 10th micron i don't you know because i read somewhere else that that uh you you know they were a little unsure if uh the ken schwartz products were gonna continue to exist so i ordered a, a couple of bottles a couple of little bottles to hopefully keep me for a while uh and and uh it turns out I got the notice and they're going to like show up tomorrow. So <laughs> I'm, I'm happy about that. But uh, in my experience here today, I'm, I'm so happy with how the uh, cubic boron nit uh, nitride uh, does work. I may look at some of the other larger particle sizes and stick with on... Uh, 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 totally CBN uh, abrasives. Uh, it's one of the beautiful things about about uh, something like this. Once it gets dirty, you know, if it gets dirty from a little swarf or whatever, you can take it on the shaping plate. And unlike, uh, you know, one of, uh, you know, balsa has been around for a long, long time in the knife world. Uh, one of the uh, sharpening methods uh, that is popular with a number of people because it's a low cost uh, includes stropping on balsa with 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 an, um, uh, a diamond paste or some sort of a uh, uh, an abrasive that you put on there because it does embed itself down into uh, but on that method it does require you to maintain uh, flatness uh, with a convex method, it does not require you to maintain flatness because you want it to curve. So any degradation of uh, uh, your media or anything like that doesn't really go into the negative side. Like, like if you're flat and as soon as you warp or as soon as you cave in just a little bit somewhere, um, uh, that, that kind of puts puts a little uh, problem into uh, your particular method. This doesn't. And the beauty is that I could take this and I can just get this on some sandpaper and on my uh, shaping plate, clean this right up. Doesn't take that long, I've done it. Uh, and uh, recharge them. So I can take these and I get these from 
chef's knives to go along with this particular magnetic uh, plate. They come in, uh, I get the three by 11 size, they come in three by eight as well. Uh, and uh, um, it's a little more expensive. I've got a bunch of these things where I'm shaping them and, and, and doing a number of these th things, but they're not as easy to store as as these things that you you know with the magnetic backing that you put in into uh, bags, but I'm I'm probably gonna get some uh, CBN and replace the uh, the green, the red, and the black. Uh, the other thing is this particular roost drop. I don't know what it is about this, but uh, the uh, just taking that and uh, working that. Uh, on this, I, I am just, just really, really happy with how the draw is on that. And, and, uh, since I've gone through and I've, uh, working with, with, with a compound hollow, one hollow and another hollow, then coming up totally on something that's, that's really flat and, and, uh, able to, to kind of just draw that out really, really leaves it with, with just, just really, really a super, super, you know, that's, that's as good of a packing peanut push cut as, as I get with anything. So this is going to go to the test shave. When I put this video together, it's not going to be, uh, tonight and may not be tomorrow. I'm not sure, but, uh, uh, I am going to go ahead. I am going to test shave with this, even though there is there is some work that I need to do in here where there are a couple of little uh, uh, chip outs that you can see under magnification that I don't like. It's small. I don't know if it's going to... Uh, usually that type of thing makes for a, uh, uh, a bit of a... Uh, uh, rough shave. And this is where that, that guy that does that tissue paper test, uh, it would probably show up where, where he goes on there and he goes across and where, where, where the chip out is, it would probably, uh, uh, begin to cut. Okay. So, uh, and that's why, that's why here push cut, you know, where's a lateral movement like that. If you got, if you got teeth in, in there, it'll cut on the lateral move like it did before. But um, um, in the end of things, I'm pretty happy with, with how I went with this. Uh, it was good practice. I honestly can't uh, tell you that I think these things are, you know, because they look cool. You know, it's like, oh, look at that. It looks like a, looks like a Wade and Butcher. And, you know, it's like, mm, no. No, this is a China wonder. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of work. But it was a lot of fun. So, uh, wish you all, uh, uh, I don't know if I'll get this up before Easter Sunday, but, uh, if it's before, I hope you all have a good Easter. If it's after, I hope you all had a good Easter and this should be up before, uh, uh, the, the meetup at, uh, the Shaving Cadre. Please do check out the Shaving Cadre. It is, uh, in my opinion, it is the best shaving form to um, for the camaraderie and the lack of uh, uh, the mentality uh, that uh, prevails at some of the other places where they specialize in the beatdown. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you back in a, f uh, a few minutes as you're watching. Uh, it's definitely going to be the next day for me. Uh, and uh, uh, I forgot to mention what I was using in the, you know, I have a bottle of water that I use on the Nanoa and the water stones. I uh, have a little bit of Dawn dishwashing liquid in uh, some water that sometimes I'll use on the Nanoa. I don't think you're supposed to use soap on that, those particular water stones. I'll also use this on, um, sometimes on my codicule, sometimes on, uh, uh, 
the Arkansas Stones, it's it's a little less viscous, a little less slippery, gives you a little bit different feel. It's worth something looking into, but it, it does give you some slip, uh, a little bit more so than just plain water. And uh, this, w which is a uh, mixture of ballastol, uh, which maybe, I don't know, maybe 25% ballastol and the rest uh, water, which is what uh, I like to use for most of my work on the Arkansas stones. Uh, so that's, uh, that's it for tonight for me. Uh, we'll see you on the shave.